first time. Um, yes, I'm a bit strange. <laughs> but we love kids here. We love kids. Um, although, you know who we love as much as, as kids? Old people. And you know who we love as much as the, as the old people? The young people. And who we love as much as the young people? The little people. The little people. <laughs> How about the big people? <laughs> we love, we love, we love the way the Lord has blessed us. Um, we are, we have actually spent several weeks in a study of prayer. And our goal has been not so much to um, learn um, oh, uh, something new about prayer or anything at all like that. Our goal has been to kind of just brush up on things so that we can be more effective in prayer. You know, it's one thing to pray. It's another thing to be effective in prayer. You know what I mean? And so uh, that's what we've been working with. Well, today, we're going to take a look at the... Uh, at a term, and I will explain the term in a little bit. We're going to look at the at the uh, prayer of exalmen. Prayer of exalmen. Okay. Now, one of the things that if you go into the Lord's Prayer and you examine the sixth petition, the sixth petition of the Lord's Prayer is, and lead us not into temptation. Now, not a lot of people think about that or uh, reflect on it a little bit, but if you begin to think about when you're praying through the Lord's Prayer and saying, lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, you're beginning to speak the heart of the Christian. Because the Christian is saying, Lord, I love you, and I love your people, and I love your creation. And I don't want to sin. I don't want to hurt you. I don't want to hurt people. I want to do what's right. And so first of all, Jesus, don't lead me into temptation. That's so much different than what so many of us do, is that we just kind of creep right up to the edge and say, yeah, you know, well, you know. That's not what he's saying. He's saying here, we're stepping back. We say, I don't... Lord, please, I don't even want to be tempted. Have you ever had a time when you were tempted and even though you didn't give in, you felt dirty? Hmm? You know? Now we have to understand that what, as long as we're in this flesh, we're going to have times of temptation. And, but the key is, is, to, uh, is to not give in. However, the prayer is, please, Jesus, don't let me even be tempted. On the other hand, if I must walk down the path that has temptation, will you please deliver me from the evil? I don't want to sin. Okay? Now that's in the Lord's Prayer. Two very simple lines, but very, very important lines. I mean, this kind of... I'm not going to... Uh, so we can begin to see this. Now this actually becomes kind of the foundation for what we're talking about today. This is about our hatred sin. We don't want to be part sin to be a part of our lives at all. Now, I use the term examen. And the reason why I use it, and I spent a lot of time this weekend trying to find a more familiar um, oh, uh, word. But what's happened is, this is a very specific word. You can tell from its roots that it has to do with examination. <laughs> but there isn't a word, this is a technical word, that means something very specific. It means, it comes from the Latin, it refers to the tongue, or a weight indicator, like the balances in the scale. Uh, hence, it's conveying the idea of an accurate assessment 
of the true situation. How many times have you been in a situation and you've had two people that are in conflict and you listen to one tell the story and then you listen to the other tell the story and the only thing that's similar between the two is the date, the time, and the place. <laughs> okay? You see? But this prayer of examine talks about accuracy of the true situation. So that's what we're looking for. Now, uh, there are two parts to the prayer of examine. The first one is an examination, examine of consciousness. Consciousness. We're aware. Okay? You are conscious right now. I don't see anybody sleeping. I'm impressed. <laughs> uh, but it is the by the examine of consciousness. We discover how God has been present uh, to us throughout the day and how we have responded to His loving presence. It's the idea, uh, another way we can talk about this is counting your blessings. But what we do is we begin to examine our day and we begin to talk about, well, where did I see God today? What happened? What came across my Did I miss God today? But I work with my consciousness to where I become aware of the presence of God. Okay? Uh, the second part is the examine of conscience. Now our conscience, you know, of course, is our moral indicator, right from wrong and whatever. Now, this is in which we uncover those areas that need cleansing, Purifying and healing. I want to stop there just a little bit. Too many times when people think about uh, examining themselves, it's always on the negative side. But did you notice that what we're talking about here is not only where we might need to be cleansed or purified, but also where we need healing. And I can tell you that many times the problems that people have is their need for healing inner healing and things like that, rather than um, uh, just, uh, you know, you're just a bad person and whatever. So uh, that's what we're talking about here. Two sides, consciousness and conscience. All right. We reflect prayerfully on the thoughts, the feelings, and actions of our day to see how God has been at work among us. That got put in the wrong place. It's the means God uses to take us more aware of our surroundings, and it's one way we heed the call to reverse the mighty heat of the of God. You know, how many times have we said, hey, Lord, if you'll do this for me, I'll certainly thank you and praise you. Now, I intentionally this morning, when we prayed our pastoral prayer, thanked God for the blessing of helping us with taco dinner last night. Why did I do that? Because if you were here for the prayer that we prayed before it started, I said to God, if you'll bless us, we'll praise you. Okay? I just keep it a promise. Well, what this helps us to do, it helps us to rehearse those things. You know what God did for me today? I tell you, you start a dinner conversation like that. See if dinner doesn't go better than, than saying, did you brush your teeth today? <laughs> The examination of conscience is without apology and without defense, we ask to see what is truly in us. Now notice this is a request that we make. Without apology and without defense. See, our problem is, is too often we want to we want to defend our actions, we want to apologize. But what we do, we just drop our guard and say, okay, God, search me. Now, what happens, it's for our good, for our healing and our happiness. But I want you to notice that it's a joint search. This is not self-examination. And I had earlier put the text, the, the title of the, of the sermon as the prayer of self-examination. But it's not that. It's a joint search. It's God and I walking hand in hand and looking through this. The problem is, on one extreme, we have this tendency to 
uh, to live in denial, uh, to try and declare our innocence, try and explain everything away, and just get off with it. And I can tell you, one of the biggest problems that we have, uh, that the people in this day and age have, is they simply will not face the truth. They live in denial. Okay? Now, on the other hand, I also know people, and some of them are sitting in, this pew, in these pews, that when they begin a search and they find something wrong, they just beat themselves mercilessly. Especially, especially if you have a, 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 a melancholy temperament, you're a bit of an artist, you tend to be introspective, and you judge yourself absolutely without mercy. Oh, I'm so awful. Maybe I ought to just go eat worms and die. <laughs> My, and my point here is, is that too often what happens is, is we, when, when you try and do self-examination uh, by yourself, that's what happens. One or the other. You either, uh, you either dismiss what you got or you shove yourself to the end. And that's why we need to ask God to walk with us. Now, if the examination is solely self-examination, we will always end up with excessive praise or excessive blame. So, <laughs> that's why uh, I like Craig's song, I Can't Even Walk Without You Holding My Hand. That's what this is about. That's what this is about. Okay. Now, the 139th Psalm is a marvelous prayer of a prayer of exam. And we have the psalmist starting out. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to walk through. I'm just going to, just going to kind of outline the, uh, the psalm. I'm not going to get all the verses or comment on it. Just get a real quick walk through and let you go home and read it and digest it and think about it. Because this is something that uh, I'll tell you, Lucy and Carol and the kids have all been gone this weekend. I've sung blessed quietness ever since. <laughs> and, but I've had time to, to just reflect on this. And it is, it is just marvelous here. So let's start off. First of all, you need to understand that there are actually uh, four major sections to this. Uh, they're about six verses long. And they have a theme that goes with them. And the first section, verses 1 through 6, is the God who searches and knows us. Now think about this. O Lord, you've searched me and you know me. Now when we start talking about knowing us, it means there's an intimate understanding of what we have. And he goes on to, he goes on to say, uh, you know when I sit, you know when I stand, you know my thoughts from far, you know all of these things, God, but you know me. And I'm going to tell you something, the knowledge of someone is wonderful. Did you know I have seen people who have been married for many years and never really knew their spouse? Now, President Trump could walk through the door, and we would all certainly acknowledge it. But I would be surprised if any of us know him. You see the point? And here we have the God of the nations saying to uh, or the, the psalmist. Now, notice what we're doing. We're searching consciousness. What am I aware of? What's the absolute truth? As Thomas says, oh Lord, you search me and you know me. Such knowledge is too wonderful to me, too lofty for me to handle. I can't get my mind around this, God. You know me. You know my thoughts of so God. You know all this. Wow. You're a wonderful God. You know me. Notice there's no, there's no self-recrimination. There is nothing about this that is uh, uh, guilt-producing. We're not saying, hey, we're just... Wow, God, look what you did. 
Okay, and he starts off by saying, you know me. Uh, one of the things that I, as in my study, that I picked up on the searching, uh, let me just share a few verses with you. The God who searches and knows us. In uh, Psalm 131.1, we talked about, you searched me and you know me. Uh, in 2 Chronicles 28.9, when God is speaking to uh, Solomon at the dedication of the temple, and he says to Solomon, you know, you walk like David your father, the Lord searches every heart and understands every motive behind the thoughts. God knows. God knows. And, and finally, in 1 Corinthians 2.10, Paul says, the Spirit, is, Spirit searches all things, even the deep things of God. Now, I think one thing that many of us, especially in our fast-moving society, have lost sight of is, is that God searches and God knows. You may think you have it hidden. See, so many times with us, we have our public self, and then we have our private self. Too often, we have what we want to be our reputation and over here what we really are. Now, when we come to the idea of God knowing us, what we want is our reputation needs to be what we really are. Mm. How about, see, truth, the actual truth in every situation. Oh, wonderful. Okay, now, verses... What happened? I missed one. Oh. That, uh, I missed one. Uh, uh, chapters, uh, or verses uh, 7 through 12. Here he says, where can I go from your spirit? Now in this particular, in this particular one, he begins talking about uh, that God's presence is everywhere. He said, you know, uh, if I go up to heaven, you are there. If I make my bed, and the, uh, the different places try and go to it, but if I make my bed, they call it in the depths, it's Sheol. Now, Sheol is literally the place of the dead or the depths or whatever. And when we begin to talk about Sheol, um, if I go up to heaven, you're there. If I make my bed, and the King James says, if I make my bed in hell, behold, you're there. You're in the place of the dead. If I take a look at the, dawn, uh, the wings of the dawn, which means the east, and if I, uh, if I go to the sea in the west, wherever we are in all of those, doesn't matter, up, down, in, out, you are there. And... He says, he ends it up that section saying, even the darkness will not be dark to you. The night will shine like the day. The darkness is as light to you. Now the scripture teaches us men love darkness rather than night because they're, uh, the light because their deeds are evil. And they seek and do things under cover of darkness. What they don't know is, is that God has infrared vision. <laughs> He sees everything. You know? You may, you may get away with it here, but you won't be getting by with it there. You know, I've learned, I've learned, I've been a Christian just long enough that I don't do some things not because I'm such a good person. I just don't want to stand eyeball to eyeball to Jesus and explain it. Right? Okay. But, but you're there. But isn't that wonderful? Think about this. No matter where we go, wherever we're into, God sees, God knows, God knows our hearts. He's there. Isn't that wonderful? First of all, uh, He knows us and He sees what's going on. And then the next one is, He moves it. He says, if I make my death bed in the depths of hell, uh, in Sheol, from the earth, if I make my bed there, uh, you're there. But then He comes up and He says, for you created my inmost being. Now what we have to pick up here, again, this is poetry, 
when he's talking about that inmost being, remember he talks about the dying to go to earth, but remember our, uh, uh, we are created from dust. And so not only do we go to dust, he sees the dust, for you created my inmost being, I praise you because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Have any of you uh, ever taken thought of just looking at uh, a general science view of human anatomy? Think about your mind. Talk about being fearfully and wonderfully made. I, the lens, iris, receptacles on the back, it all works. It takes light, sends it to the brain, and translates it into pictures. What? The truth of the matter is, we love cameras, but we have yet to make a camera that can duplicate what the eye does. Right? We're fearfully and wonderfully made. Oh, God, you... Now, notice here, you saw my unformed body. Well, that's wonderful in itself. But notice, all the days ordained for me were written in your book before I was born. God knew me before I was a twinkle in my daddy's eye. <laughs> It's true. It's wonderful. God. They, they were thinking about the thing. And we're beginning to think, you know, you almost want to break out a song and say, what a mighty God we serve, you know? Uh, it's, it's there. Uh, it's, it's written in a book. And then he goes on farther and he says, how precious to me are your thoughts, O God, were I to count them, they would outnumber the grains of the same. Now notice he didn't say thoughts about me. He just said God's thoughts. We began putting those things together. We start talking about creation. We're fearfully, wonderfully made. He knows us. Our days are written. Oh. Oh. If that doesn't give you a shiver your liver, you've probably got liver problems. <laughs> <laughs> now, this next one is interesting because he has moved from from praise and things like that to where he takes on evil in the world. He says, and, and he opens up here in verse 19 when he says directly, if only you would slay the wicked. Uh, can I have a show of hands? How many of you have said that to God? <laughs> huh? Yeah. Well, Craig doesn't say that because if he slew the wicked, the wicked, he'd be out of the job. <laughs> but, but if only you'd slay the wicked. And he goes on and he discusses the wickedness and how he hates it. And he makes this alliance with God. Uh, he talks about the wicked. They speak of you with evil intent. Listen to what goes on on many of our newscasts and stuff like that. And how people speak against God and all that. Okay? And he says, I have nothing but hatred. Now, that's got to be balanced out with Jesus' teaching that says, love your enemies. Pray for those that despitefully use you, okay? But there's a point there where we hate evil. It is this translation, transition then that leads us in to the request for examine of our conscience. And it's here, he says, and it's so beautiful. Search me, O God. Who am I hurt? Test me. Know my anxious thoughts. See if there's any offensive way in me and lead me in the way everlasting. <clears throat> We're right back to the Lord's Prayer. And we started, we're ending the song where we started. Oh Lord, you search, you know, you, you, uh, you've searched me and you know me. You, you've done that. And we end up with a request saying, I love you. 
I have just been thinking about so much. I, the way you know me. Uh, and oh, uh, and the, uh, uh, the, the, the fact that you're always there and, and that, uh, that I'm fearfully and wonderfully made. And, oh, I've been thinking about these things. God, please, I love you so much. You are so pure. You are so holy. Please. Search me. I don't want to do it myself, God, because I'm either going to be exaggerating my goodness or exaggerating my badness. I, I can't get this right. But would you take my hand and walk with me? I want you to, want to notice something. When you pray this prayer, often you are going to be led into examining your darker side. Okay? And it's not pleasant. You know, this is not one of those, this is not a, uh, often it is not pleasant. Many times it is. Don't worry. Because when you hear, you, you'll hear from time to time, God will take you through something and say, well done, my good and faithful servant. But when you say, see if there's any offensive way in me, God knows. He knows what we have hidden. You know, say, um, uh, look over there in that corner. Do you see the cobwebs? <laughs> think, think we need to clean that up. I'll help you do it. I'm going to make a way of escape from every temptation, and I'm going to help you clean up, and we're going to do better. But, but uh, uh, this is offensive, and you need to do something about it. All right, Lord, let's get started. You don't try and defend yourself. You don't try and explain it away. You don't do any of that kind of stuff. You simply, simply, Walk with God to become a better person. Amen. Well, let's close. <laughs> Last week, when I was literally here in the pulpit, I was preaching on intercessory prayer. And I just felt the Lord say to me, you need to talk about prayer right now. Talk to people like that. And I will tell you, I've learned a lot this week. And I, uh, I have enjoyed my study. But I think when we begin thinking about being effective <coughs> in prayer, this is where, you know, we talked about if I regard iniquity in my heart, the Lord won't hear me. Well, what happens? This is the antidote to that. This is the antidote. So, so. We pray with the psalmist after having such a marvelous reflection. Search me, O God, and know my heart. Test me and know my thoughts. See if there be any offensive way in me. Lead me in the way everlasting. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, you have been so good to us. And thank you for teaching us First of all, to look for the true situation the way it really is. And to think about it and to think about you and to get to know you better as we reflect on our day and, and reflect on our life and different things and to see you. Thank you. Thank you, too, for not leaving us to our own devices to have to make a personal judgment on things in our lives. We come before you. We do ask that you would be with us. Help us. Father, thank you for it. In Jesus' name. Amen. I'd like for you to stand. Turn to hymn number 473. <laughs> now the altar is open. If you feel like you need to pray, Nancy, you have a choice.